What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be completing preparation from TriHackMe. This is going to teach us some incident response terminology and what happens during incident response. So without wasting time, first thing is find this new room. It's only a couple of days old on TriHackMe. And there's going to be a lot of reading. For me in this video, I'm going to give you the chance to read and I'll just go through the questions and explain how I get to the answers. But I did actually read everything. I think it's boring for me to read it back to you. So before starting the room, you need to complete SOC level one path. There's suggesting that. So we're going to agree. Then let's go and say, here is the instant response capability. So they define a few things here, like an event. This is observed occurrence within a system. So maybe something happens like a login, someone logged in or someone sends an email. Or if we block an infection, that's an event. An incident is specifically a security violation. I think that's interesting here. And most important for us to understand is these steps for incident response. So we start with preparation, which is where we are right now. And during preparation, we the organization can effectively react to both breach and lay down procedures. So we are ensuring that that happens. Then during identification, we want to know any operational deviations and also see why they happened so that's us identifying what happened then we have analysis and scoping containment eradication and lesson learned so these are the steps in an instant response process and i like this diagram here okay so what is ob an observed occurrence within a system that's an event they just told us right there what is described as a violation that's going to be an incident under which incident response plan do organizations lay down their procedures that's the preparation phase that's when we say hey what are our procedures under which phase will an organization resume business and operation fully that's after everything is done so that's going to be recovery and lesson learned first phase we went through basic terminology what is an event what's an incident uh, and the different phases of an incident response process. Very good for knowing, especially if you're going to be going for interviewing for like a SOC analyst job or incident response jobs. This is going to get you up to speed with the terminology. Then here, we have to download some files. And it looks like it's a chain of custody document. This is where we can track down who had the evidence, how did they handle it, and what time, where did they keep it, and all that uh, good stuff. So we can see where the evidence goes okay so they're talking about creating a CSET team and CSET stands for cyber security incident response team and usually that team is not just a bunch of cyber security people we have people from the business technical legal and public relations but i mean most of the time when people think of CSET, they think of the incident responders training and assessment sessions so we want to make sure that people get training we talk about documentation especially our policies and procedures and then of course communication with chain uh, of custody know who had what document so a group that handles events involving cyber security breaches comprising of individuals with different skills and expertise that's going to be our CSERT and I think they want the cyber security incident response team full term then which document would be used to accompany any evidence collected and keep track of uh, everything. That's the document that we had here, the chain of chain of custody. Chain of custody. Oh, so it's chain of custody documents. I had said document. So that's the document that they gave us as a, an example. So preparation. This section here, we're talking about making sure that you know what assets do you have? What do you need to protect? How important are those assets and then it will determine how much you can put in protecting them and there's the hive project which is pretty cool i don't think i've shown the hive here but i've played with the hive it's a really cool uh instant response tool that we can use for tracking assets and a lot of other things as well so we need some things in order for us to be able to be effective as part of this C search team. So we need some hard drives if we're going to be cloning things, especially uh, software for cloning things like NCAS, Sleuth Kit. Then we might need a network tab 
also some cables, uh, carries, maybe something to go on drives as well. PC repair kits, copies of incident response. Okay, so what kit would contain necessary in the instant res response things? This is going to be called a jump bag or jump kit. I think a bag is what they want here. So in your jump bag, you should have all these things here that they list. All right. So next, we need to start a machine. They say it takes about four minutes. And while it's starting, we'll do side by side. And then we will go down here. They're telling us to go on this machine and enable Windows logging. We, I've done this several times on this channel uh, while setting up my labs as well. But we will see if once the machine starts. But one thing that they talk about is, you know, the different types of logs that you can get. You can get some events, which is just events like, you know, network events like DHCP address was assigned or something was seen on the network. Then we have audit events that actually record activities um, based on audit things like audit D. Uh, is one of those services that you can see up there. Or oh, Windows does have a lot of internal auditing as well. We can also have some errors and application is just crashing and it's not working correctly. We can have debug where we can use this to find problems within the, the app as well. And these logs could come from network devices or perimeter devices, things like firewalls and VPN, or for networks is switches, or system logs from your operating systems, and also applications. And I like this graphic here. So setting up visibility, they're telling us here to go on a Windows system, to go to security settings, local policy. Great. Yeah, that's some simple stuff. I'm not too worried about that. And then they are, it looks like they are running Atomic to generate some events within Windows event logs. And since this machine here is taking forever, uh, what event ID is for file created? Is that 11? I think I, it's 11. Okay, I don't have these things memorized, but I, I knew that uh, 11, that's a generic Windows uh, event ID. Under software restrictions policy, what is the default security level assigned to all policies? Uh, we, can, we can find this very easily. Not showing, so it's unrestricted. Because I'm almost done. Find the audit policy folder under local policy settings. Okay, so since the machine is taking forever, let me see if I can get in my, my mine here. What do they say? So I'm going to just check my local security pol policy. This one, under audit policy. Uh, this one is saying no auditing. Oh, so the options are failure or success. Okay, so I guess we need this machine here. But now that we know it's failure or success, we can type... I think that's the one that they would have. Yeah, that's the answer. So we could have seen the same thing in there. And since the machine is taking forever and I don't have too much time to wait for it, we'll just say this room is complete. And of course, I read everything. Please read everything. And if you like this style of things, please let me know in the comments. We will just go through some basic things in five minutes or less and we learn something. So thanks for being here and I hope to see you next time.